Okay. Alex Antic is the single most, uh, well, how do I say, uh, patient part of tonight's program. Lots of technical issues, lots of other weird things. Thank you for sitting there. I think you were there from the second <laughs> I opened my mouth about two hours ago. Thank you, mate. I owe you one. So today, qu uh, today, China have basically openly admitted that it's all political. All the trade stuff's completely political. Think of all of those things that they've told us and lied and most of all, all the rest of it, right? Um, as well as the United States, which has turned around and said to Australia, hey, get ready, this thing's going to go for a lot longer. Today was a big day in the China conversation. What did you notice about those two big developments today? Well, I don't think it's any great surprise, Paul, that, um, that the tension between Australia and China is not going anywhere. I think even the Treasurer um, said today that he, he thought that was probably going to be the case. You know, we've seen a pretty tumultuous 18 months in uh, relations between Australia and China, and we've seen sanctions through uh, barley, coal, seafood, all the rest of it. And there's this noticeable, I think, um, steadiness of the rhetoric that's coming out of the state-run newspapers, the Global Times, that the, the almost trolling that's coming out of, uh, mm. out of China at the moment in Beijing is pretty noticeable. So I don't think it is going anywhere. I think the other thing that's really noticeable um, is the rhetoric in the speech, Xi's speech of, of a week ago or so, where um, we really saw, I think, some pretty, uh, some pretty damning rhetoric coming out of there as well. I, someone counted them up and the number of times we heard the word reju rejuvenation was about 26. Mm. Uh, it was about 44 times that the, the, the phrase the Chinese nation was, was used and that's about double um, the, the last sort of similar speech given by Hu. So this rhetoric is going up, it's not going anywhere. Well, also... And this is where I talk about Western countries, that Western countries, something that Australia, the UK, the US in many ways all have in common, which is we used to have absolute sense of national identity, absolute sense of national pride, but there are plenty of people who want to eat away at that all day, every day, including the people who say, oh, Independence Day, it's a celebration of white people. Uh, you know, all the, the stuff about Australia Day here. How important to you in the fight with China, or at least standing up to China, is national identity and national pride here? Because it's being drilled into them there. Yeah, it sure has. And you could see that once again in the, in the speech that Xi made. It was a lot about nationalist pride and, you know, building, building, building and all that sort of stuff. And look, I think what this shows us is that we do need to rebuild that sense of nationalism. And I, and I actually think we should look at everything we do in this country needs to be about making Australia stronger. It needs to be about making us more powerful, more efficient, and basically are better able to defend ourselves. You know, we, we need to hear less about changing the date of Australia Day. We need to hear less about critical race theory and radical gender studies and, and all those sorts of things and more about what we do to use every breath we can to make Australia stronger because, look, we've seen what's happening in Taiwan. There's something like a record 28 incursions by Chinese fighter aircraft over the Taiwanese Straits in the last month. Um, this is not going away. Uh, that enemy is getting bigger and badder and bolder and we have to be ready. Yeah, I'm with you. Senator, again, thank you for being so patient. I owe you one any time, mate. I'll door knock for you next time you're up. <laughs> My pleasure, Thank you. Paul. Appreciate yeah, it. Thanks, thank mate. you. Good on you, Alex. <laughs>